media, are you surprised the Eagles are expected to trade Wentz after seemingly choosing him over Doug Peterson? Good morning, Jenna. And to be honest with you, I'm not surprised. It just seems as though Carson Wentz has pushed the Philadelphia Eagles completely into a, uh, into a corner. He hasn't made any public comments since his benching earlier in the season. He, uh, he did not make any public comments when Nick Sirianni was named the head coach. And now you have to That's wonder, true. is there a bigger issue? And quite honestly, I think the bigger issue is Howie Roseman. Howie Roseman is responsible for drafting guys, putting better players around Carson Wentz. And you can, you can say what you want. There just hasn't been a bunch of talent that has worked out for them um, as far as in the draft. And then you ought to mention that Jalen Hurts was drafted in the second round last year, something that seemingly has pushed Carson Wentz over the edge as far as the organization. So Howie Roseman still being there uh, it is the biggest issue, it seems, for Carson Wentz. And you also have to figure this thing. The Philadelphia Eagles, as they move forward, they're willing to take the biggest dead cap money, dead money cap hit in the history of the NFL, 34 million bucks. And Brandon, the question to me is even bigger than that. Is Jalen Hurst the answer? Do you feel that he's the answer moving forward? Because if he's yep. not the answer, now you don't feel comfortable with him as the answer. Now with the sixth pick in the draft and Justin Fields happens to drop, now you have to ask yourself, are we willing to draft a quarterback in that position with the sixth pick? That's a big question. This organization wow. has a long way to go to get there, but they have to figure some things out quickly. Right. And the first part is probably trading Carson Wentz. Yeah, look, look, so I'm not surprised, but I want to get there a, a, a little later. And I'm not trying to hijack uh, this discussion. Uh, when the, the first thing that came up for me when I saw the question was Deshaun Watson. Now, to me, it's like there's a syst systemic issue here, and it comes down to how the NFL wants to set the precedent. Deshaun Watson is out there saying, I want to move on. I don't believe in this organization. There's some real problems here. Matthew Stafford, rumblings coming out week 14, week 15. Matthew Stafford wants out. Matthew Stafford got out right after the season. When he was able to get out, he got out. He's going to L.A. Then you look at Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz, oh, are we taking coach or are we taking a the quarterback? They chose the quarterback. Then the quarterback said, I don't want you. I want out. And then all of a sudden, a week before the Super Bowl, we start hearing reports, oh, Carson Wentz can be traded in days. And now it's down to minutes. And now we're seeing reports coming out of Houston saying they are refusing to take people's calls. They're holding on to Deshaun. So what is the precedent here? What is the issue here? It seems to me like there's this 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 power play. Oh, Deshaun Watson, um, you you want out, but we 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 like you as the player. We're going to keep you here. Brett Favre comes out, and Brett Favre says, you know what? You're getting paid. Just just be quiet and, and just do your job. Where is Brett Favre now, Nick? That's something that you talked about off camera. You know, in in our in our production meeting. So it, it seems like the precedent has been set, but we're playing we're playing a, a different sides of the fence of who we want to give power to. So Carson Wentz, am I surprised? I'm absolutely not surprised. You go back to the to the the Philly Voice two years ago, and there's a couple things that they talked about. He's selfish, uncompromising, and he's playing favorites. That's absolutely true. I was still playing in the National Football League when this stuff was happening, and, and I had buddies on that team on the defensive side, the offensive side, and that's that was some of the things. That they talked about so I'm not surprised that he won out we can highlight some of the things on the field we can correct that but what you can't correct is are you relatable in the locker room do guys want to play for you do you do that whole playing favorites thing that can divide a team that can divide an offense so Carson wins there's no doubt in my mind the type of person he is that he can get the job done if he gets a fresh start somewhere else but he has to lean into how do I become a better leader and how do I meet people where they're at and lead all and not just my guys here or there. But I like Carson Wentz, but he needs there's some work he needs to do uh, to take it to a whole nother level, Nick. So, Brandon, there's a lot there. So let me try to, you know, in a little scattershot yep. address it all. Clearly and obviously, the way me certain media and certain former players react to what is called a trade demand, or if it's called a trade request, has to do with a lot of things that it should have nothing to do with. 
The fact that Carson Wentz gets to request a trade and Deshaun Watson is demanding a trade and holding the franchise hostage and is show, told to shut up and play, that is a bigger issue, but it's almost separate from this specific issue, if you will. I think what hurts Deshaun, right. in addition to who you want to give power to, is Deshaun's too good for his own good. I think Deshaun is such mm -hmm. a great player, the Texans are hesitant to, that you could ever come up with a package good enough for him. So there's that part of it. The other part that's going on with the Wentz thing is this nonsense that he could be traded for two first round picks. The chances of that are 0%. It is the same chances of whatever team trading that trades for him signing Brian Westbrook to be his running back. This might sound like a decent idea. <laughs> it ain't happening. There's no Sounds chance. Like a great idea In to me. fact, I would rather have Brian Westbrook as my starting running back in 2021 then give up two first round picks for Carson Wentz. <laughs> so that's not going to happen. The idea was well, Stafford four, there was two first round picks plays. and golf, it's it's insanity. Four, please. That's it's it. total <laughs> abject insanity. Now, the question that I have and I want to throw it back to Brian is this. If you trade for Carson Wentz, who are you getting? Because I want to show you something. Everyone talks about the MVP year when he didn't even win MVP. Carson Wentz, he's the memorial MVP winner that never won an MVP. He and Russell Wilson, the memorial, I've never gotten an MVP vote, can all maybe commiserate together. But show me Carson Wentz's numbers that year, and then show me everything else he's done in his career. It's one magical season, and then the rest of the career. And folks believe that magical season is duplicable. Well. Can we show another Philly quarterback who once upon a time had a magical season? Nick Foles. Yeah. And then the rest mm -hmm. of the career looks pretty damn mediocre. Brian, what do you think is the outlier? Do you think the outlier is the MVP level play? Or the outlier is, because he wasn't bad in 18 and 19, he just wasn't MVP level. No. Is the outlier the near MVP or is the outlier the horrid season we just saw? Well, I, I think if you're a team that's willing to trade for Carson Wentz, you have to believe that this past 2020, past season 2020, was the outlier. And what you have to correct when he comes into your system is one, his fundamentals. You have to be able to uh, change his fundamentals, change his mechanics back to the, their much shorter throwing motion, get his footwork together. And in order to do all those things, you have to change him mentally. He has to be able to accept coaching. That's one of the big excuses that they've had and, and reasons in Philadelphia that some of the players on that team didn't find comfort in Carson Wentz because he wasn't willing to accept coaching and was very belligerent about saying, I'm going to be right and pushing back with some of the things that the coaches were trying to do. As a, as a franchise guy, of course, there we you want go. you to be successful, but you have to be coached very well. And that means he has to get his footwork, his mechanics, his fundamentals back. And that's the type of quarterback that can go out there and be close to an MVP candidate that he was in 2017. If he doesn't and is not willing to correct those things, then he won't be even close to that guy, which he hasn't been since 2017. There you go, B. And Tom Brady showed us this year that talent only takes you so far. Tom Brady didn't lead this team to a Super Bowl and win Super Bowl 55 because Tom Brady is the same quarterback 20 years ago physically. Tom Brady uh, led this team off of his leadership. He led his team off of being able to not be se selfish and uncompromising and playing favorites. You go back to that Philly voice. So everything you said is spot on. That's where you need to thrive as a quarterback. Talent only takes you so far. If he can lean into this and he's more than capable uh, of doing it, then he could get back to the MVP level. But if guys in the locker room don't like you, if guys in the locker room don't want to play with you, then you're going to have the same exact season that you had this year, 100%. So I'm glad that you pointed that out. Talent only takes you so far, Jenna.